All right. So what we're going to do here is I've modelled 310UB32, 310UB40, and 310UB46. So I'm going to make sure before I export it, get a number of these components. Um, not really fast as to the numbering at this stage. Apply, OK. And I've done my numbering. I then come into here and I export out this file. All right, click OK and save. OK, so before I get started with my conversion, because I want to actually know every record that's been written into my database, what I do is I'll come in here and I'll delete everything by using some SQL code connected to my GTC mapping database with a GTC profile conversion, right? And just to check that there's nothing in here, you can see with this code that's executed, um, and this is what you would do in the SQL management tools. I'm using Visual Studio. It, it's no real great big difference, right? So if we come back in, start up our 2020, and wait for it to load. Second. Right. So here we have our profiles. Everything's been numbered. You know, as I said before, I've got 310 UB32, 40, and 46. So the idea is I come in here, I do my export, I do give it a file name to export to um, if it already exists. <laughs> Hit yes, it writes the file out and save. Now, if we go back to Visual Studio and execute this select again, we have three entries, right? So you can see here the three entries themselves on export. It's taking this catalog with this name, and that's the internal name inside Advanced Steel, and inside the SMLX file, it's called the catalog that name and that name. So essentially what we can do here is if I go and edit this data and we change the name, right? Uh, in fact, before we change the name, if we go and look at the SMLX file, so if we come into here and look at the SMLX file, and if I open it up with 7-zip, right, which is a free tool you can download, and we go into the contents folder, double click into the AS Revit XML file, which sits inside the SMLX file. You can see when we scroll down a little bit further down, here we go. You can see there is the GTC name and the GTC standard, right, which is coming from that table, right? So that's what, so the GTC standard, GTC section. Go back into here, GTC standard, GTC section, right? So if I close that XML file down, and let's close, that's fine, let's close the 7-zip as well. Come back in here, and let's say we change this to A, B, C, D, and we'll go E, F, G, H, I, J, K, right? L. All right, so we've changed the heart data now so you can see if I run the select again you can see the data's changed right so if I go back to my documents I'll delete my file go back to advanced deal and export again hit the export go back to our uh, database you'll see that nothing's changed there in the way of because it found the matching things here, the, the matching standard and section size. But if we go to my documents and find that SMLX file, open that up again with 7-zip, you'll notice if I open up that XML file, scroll down, the name that we see here is now ABCD to match what we called it in the database. Right. So that supports that initial workflow um, that we talked about here. When we go to, from advanced deal out through the export into the SMLX file, 
it's reading what's in that location to create the name that sits inside here. Okay, so here you can see I have my Revit template with my families for my section sizes in that, right? So what I've gone and done is I've modified my GTC profile conversion table so that when the UB from Advanced Deal, that's a 310 UB40, writes the SMLX file out, it's using the GTC standard of this and the GTC section size of this. So I'm actually including the UB14 entry in the database so as to be able to embed that information in my actual uh, SMLX file, right? You can see it's all in there, no problems. Right, so if we now go and start up our advanced deal again, in the meantime, we'll just make sure that our SMLX file is gone. Yep, it's been deleted. Go back into advanced deal. Then you'll, once it's finished loading, we'll load up our file that we've been using the whole time. And we choose to export, export the SMLX file, documents, replace. Okay, we go back to my documents, hit F5, open up the um, SMLX file, look at the content. And again, if we scroll down, find the parameters, here we go. You can now see it's called UB14. We now have a, uh, a piece of data in the SMLX file to which we can then go on to that next phase of creating the profile conversion string to go and import into Revit. Right? So essentially for every profile size that you have in advanced deal, just for this table, we need to create a single entry because of the way this template is set up. Um, where are we here? Here, Revit. So because of the way this template is set up with these extra prefixes at the beginning, because Advanced Steel doesn't know what these prefixes are, for that one table, we need to have one entry for every section size and even duplicate those for the object type for both beam and column. So next what we want to do is we want to formulate this component of our import, right? So what we want to do is we want to go into C Program Data, um, Autodesk Advanced Data and go and edit our 2020 GTC Mapping Access Database, right? Again, from this particular instance, what I would be inclined to do is this time round, obviously we are referring to the profile exports conversion table, right? So we go back to here, profile exports conversion table. You can see again, I've cleared out the whole table just by clicking, highlighting, hitting the delete key, and that database is now empty. So inside of Revit, so we come into here and we choose the home view. Right, so what we want to do is delete those. Right, so what we want to do is come in and import using Australian standard, pick OK, go to our documents, find our SMLX file, and here's that, that file, pick OK. And the system should come and prompt us to import that data, right? Um, Cancel that. Right, so it doesn't actually know which one to do where. Or it, it, it's actually questioning us, is this the uh, estimated mapping, right? If it isn't, we would change it and select it. Pick OK. And the system then goes and inserts all those bits of steel into the system, into the drawer, into the model, right? So here you can see my 310 UB46, 40, and 32. 
Now, this is obviously the, the manual approach, right? But if we go back to where our database is, open that up, what we should see, go to the profile conversion table, we've now got three records as to what is actually going to come in as part of there and what it's going to translate to. So what we want to do now is we want to take this and create a regular expression for this to then be able to bring it in with a single line entry into the, the database, right? All right, so what I've done is I've taken that text value out of that database and I need to now create that regular expression. So what we've got here is obviously it's found this UB14 and that's because of the string or the, the text that I've typed up here. So the up caret just says start from beginning and then the brackets say everything in this bracket is that first variable, right? So what I'm telling the system here to do is grab two characters from the beginning that are either an upper or a lower case A to Z. So grab two of those and then also grab two numbers and then all that is that first variable. So you can see group one UB14 has come from here, right? So what I then put in, I put a backslash X because that tells the system there's some white space or a space, have a dash, have another bit of white space. And then on the end, I put another brackets and put a dot and a star, which pretty much just says grab everything from now on in and make that another value, right? So you can see I've got percentage one and percentage two. The idea is we now take that and we rebuild that inside our database, right? So we come along here and you can see what I've done is I've taken that uh, value that was there, right? Uh, which was, the, that's the, the code that the value I just created on that website. The family name stays the same. But then the construction of the actual section size from the, or the type name from the family is percentage one space dash space percentage two. Because you can see back at the website, percentage one and percentage two. So essentially we're reconstructing for all different UBs the exact same entry from that one scenario, right? Um, the other thing to take note is I've done one entry for beam and one for column. So if you've modeled in advanced deal, the, the profiles with the model role, either column or corner column, it will use this entry. If it is coming from the other direction, it will use this entry, All right? So if we go back into um, that and delete our members, All right? And we do the import again, choose Australia, find our SMLX file, pick OK. And this time around, it shouldn't ask me anything at all. It should just import them without any questions asked at all. Here you can see, no problems, no problems, no problems, 46, 40, and 32. Right, so just to show you how this works, you can see I've, I've put in a new record here for UB24, right, which is your 530 UB82. Um, so what I've done is I've put this in my GDC mapping file, which sits inside the advanced deal folder. Um, in advanced deal, I've modeled a profile. I've numbered my items, and I now come to choosing to export the file to a different version, just no example, right? So essentially the data has been exported. Um, here you can come in, we can delete these. And when I choose import and I choose Australia library and so on, pick next, scroll down, find our SLMX file and what it'll do is it should import and not ask any questions about the import at all because it knows because of that item in the database. Right? Hopefully that makes sense. Awesome.